Hello, welcome to Anu's classroom. In this video, we'll be talking about management information system that is MIS and control systems. This is part of the course on information systems for managers, which is MMPC 8 for IGNO MBA students. By the end of this video, I hope that you will be able to uh, answer the questions like what is a system? What are the various types of systems? What exactly is management information system for managers? What is the relationship between organization and information systems? How we can use management information systems as a decision tool? What is vulnerability, abuse and auditing? So let's get started. A system is a coll collection of elements or components which are organized for a common purpose. The word is sometimes used to describe the organization or plan itself and is similar in meaning to method as I have my own little system and sometimes describes the parts in the system like as in a computer system. A system is made up of many subsystems which may be composed of further subsystems and just as a system is made up of sub or sub subsystems it itself is a part of a super or supra system. This could be termed as the environment in which the system operates. In short system is a collection of elements or components that are organized for a common purpose that is a system. There are many different types of systems like physical or abstract systems, open or closed systems, deterministic or probabilistic systems, man-made information systems which is what we will be talk we will be concentrating on. Even in man-made information systems we have different categories like formal information systems, informal information systems and computer based information systems. Since we are talking about information systems for managers we will concentrate on the computer based information systems. So the, there are again further classifications for computer based information system like transaction processing system, management information system, decision support system and office automation system. We will be talking about each of these different systems in upcoming videos but for this video we will be talking about the management information system or MIS. So this is a you can say a diagrammatic view of system. As we said, right, there is a super system or supra system which you can call as the environment in which many systems operate. Each of these systems could be further divided into subsystems and each of those subsystems may be comprised of other subsystems or components. So what is management information system exactly? Businesses use information systems at all levels of operation to collect, process or store data. And management aggregates and disseminates this data in the form of information that is needed to carry out the daily operations of a business. Management information systems or MIS is the study of people, technology, organizations and the relationships among them. MIS professionals create information systems for data management that is storing, searching and analyzing data. In addition, they also manage various information systems to meet the needs of managers, staff and customers. So what exactly is the framework of management? We have multiple frameworks like Antony's framework, Simon's framework, we have functional and in Antony's framework we have divided the system of management into functional areas whereas in Simon's framework we are dividing it into decision types. So according to Antony's framework of management, management can be divided into strategic planning, management control and operational control and the functional areas would include production, marketing, finance, personnel and HR. Whereas in Simon's framework, management is divided into three actions or activities called as intelligence, design and choice. In this, we have multiple decision types like it could be programmed decisions, non-programmed decisions or semi-programmed decisions. So as we all know, there are uh, three uh, levels of management in an organization, top, middle and bottom. So, when we talk about management information system, it differs for each of the various levels of an organization. A management in, uh, information system that is designed for the bottom level manager will have its emphasis more on the planning and coordination part, whereas the controlling, organizing and staffing will be minimal. In the middle management, more emphasis will be given to the controlling aspect and planning aspect but not much into organizing staffing or coordinating. When it comes to top management most of their time is dedicated to planning 
uh, 25% of it will be dedicated to controlling and the remaining will be split into uh, split in between coordination staffing and organizing so since these are the ways uh, these are the various way, uh, ways in which top middle or bottom managers divide their time information systems that are de designed for top middle and bottom managers should also be able to fulfill these requirements an organization has to be always viewed as an open socio-technical system which consists of people, tasks, technology, culture and structure which has the capacity to adjust itself to the changing environment. So the goals of an organization naturally will change in response to the changes in the organization or its environment. The organization has to change as a system to stay in tune with the goals. MIS should be designed viewing the organization as a system. We have various types of decisions as we saw in Simon's framework. We have programmed decisions as well as non-programmed decisions. Programmed decisions are basically automated processes and general routine work like selecting a reorder level for inventories or things like that. These are structured pro problems which can be solved using a rule procedure or a quantitative method. We have non-programmed decisions which occur in unusual and non-addressed situations like whether or not we should invest in a new technology. These are unstructured problems and the solutions also cannot be arrived at using a set of rules or procedures. The rules and procedures at best can help in identifying the alternatives but that is the end of their utility. Decision support systems generally involve these non-programmed decisions. So there will be no exact report or content or format for these decision support systems. Reports are generated uh, generally on the fly. So how does MIS help or assist in decision making? A decision support system, as we said, will help in the decision making process, but it will not give a decision by itself. It is a supporting tool only. The decision makers will compile useful information from raw data, documents, personal knowledge and or business models to identify and solve problems and make decisions. These decision support systems or DSS are interactive software based systems that are intended to help managers in decision making by accessing large volumes of information that is generated from various related information systems involved in organizational business processes like office automation system, transaction processing system and so on. So a DSS or a decision support system should naturally provide facility to its users to perform statistical analysis of data. Sales data, for example, we have to and we can analyze it for identifying any seasonal fluctuations from regular demand change. It can also or it should also have the provision to dig out secondary data from the web. There could be situations where a closed form solution is not available. In such situations, a simulation model has to be constructed to gain insight. Our decision support systems should be capable of doing that. The model will be tested on large number of inputs and a simulation system will assist the managers in such decision making. A decision support system may help a manager in performing the goal seeking analysis also by working backwards starting with the goal to arrive at conditions that may be required to achieve that goal. Due to the potential of information systems, clearly they will be under constant attack from intruders as well as hackers. Unauthorized access to data and programs may cost an organization a fortune. To avoid such abuse of information system, we need to have proper controls in place. There are many threats to information systems such as hardware failure, software failure, user error, software changes, theft of data, services, equipment and telecommunication problems. Systems will become vulnerable because of a system complexity as well. Any disaster may have an extensive effect on the system. So it is better to think of all the possible misuses and fraud from within the organization and establish system controls to prevent them. Such controls are reformed to or referred to as deterrent controls.